Hello everyone, my name is Tracy Zirkel. I'm the Health Stages Coordinator at the San Antonio Oasis. We're going to continue our presentation of fall prevention and you and safe at home by looking at some home modifications that you might make and we're also going to go through your own home and ask specific questions about your home safety. So let's look now at some home modifications. These are um, examples of different types of ramps. Many times getting into the entry of our home can be difficult. There are steps that may not have handrails or um, just very steep steps or many steps. And sometimes we have the use of a scooter or a wheelchair or a motorized wheelchair and we need to have a ramp and are not able to navigate stairs. So these are two different um, examples of ramps. So one is a modular ramp that um, comes in pieces and is assembled on site. And the other one is a custom ramp that is built um, by wood or other materials. And you notice each of them have non-skid surfaces and very heavy duty handrails. So these are examples of ramps that you could have um, installed in your home. The next thing we're going to look at is the bathroom. Now these first two things, um, one of them um, can be quite pricey. A zero step walk-in shower um, does require significant modification of your existing tub and shower combination or your tub. However, for many people, this is quite a good option as it um, enables them to continue with their independent bathing skills and, and, and daily act, or activities of daily living. Um, the other picture shows a handheld shower, a grab bar, and a shower stool. And that makes it easy for, for us, especially if we have some deconditioning or we don't have as much strength in our lower body or endurance like we used to, we're able to sit and shower and use the handheld and then use the grab bar to rise up again. And again, this is a picture inside the walk-in shower. Another option, if you're not able to put in a walk-in shower, is a bath bench. Now this particular bench um, is installed over the top of the edge of the tub. So you can see you would sit down outside of the tub, use the hand bar to hold on to as you put both feet into the tub and then slid to the edge. Then you could use your handheld shower to bathe and be safely seated on a non-skid surface. This is a good option if you're not able to put in a zero step or walk-in shower. Let's look at more bathroom modifications. Sometimes our toilets are very low and it's difficult to rise up and sit down from our toilets. So this is um, information about how to install grab bars around the toilet if there's no counter space to attach them to. This particular grab bar is mounted into the wall. Another option is to exchange your toilet for a taller toilet or to install a riser on the seat. But it certainly is helpful and probably more beneficial to have grab bars around the toilet to help assist you to your feet. Um, there are also grab bars installed in the shower next to the toilet you can see. And grab bars in any type of wet or slippery area certainly are helpful. You can hold on to them upon entering and exiting the shower and while showering just for some extra security. Well, let's talk about the doors of our home. These are examples of lever door handles. Now, many older homes have knobs and sometimes, especially if you have arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis, it's very difficult to grasp a doorknob and to turn it, especially if perhaps you're coming from the bathroom or the kitchen and your hands aren't um, or sufficiently dried, your hand can slip on the doorknob. Not only is it frustrating, it could be dangerous if there were a fire or some other emergency. So the lever door handle there on the left is a cover that goes up over an existing knob so you wouldn't have to replace the entire knob. And then the one on the right is actually a new lever that's installed. And you can see you just have to press down with the corner of your hand or your fist or your fingers to open and close the door. 
let's look again at some bathroom areas. The two pictures on the left hand side show different types of non-skid strips in the tub. Some older homes and older bathtubs don't come with non-skid surfaces. Some newer bathtubs have them built all the, in all the way. So these are things you could apply, but you would have to check them on a regular basis for any wearing or um, for the tape to come off. You wouldn't want to have any tripping hazard in your bathtub. And then on the other side of the um, area, that picture is non-skid strips on stairs, especially outdoor stairs or stairs that are not carpeted. They can become very slick. So these are strips you can purchase at any home improvement store to place either in your tub or on your stair area. Well, let's talk about our kitchen and how difficult it is to reach items in our kitchen. There are two things that you can do. A reacher is available at um, most pharmacies and most medical equipment stores. And they come in very handy to get smaller objects off of high shelves. They're not very good at reaching um, <clears throat> heavy objects, but they're also very good at reaching things from the floor that are small like socks or shoes. Um, the other slide shows a picture of a step stool. Now step stools, while they're not highly recommended to reach things, sometimes they are necessary. So it's important to make sure the step stool that you have has four solid legs, a handrail to hold on to for stability, and a non-skid surface on the legs, the feet of the stool, and the surface where you will place your feet. So when purchasing a step stool, make sure that it's not too heavy for you to carry um, and that it stores easily within reach because if it's too difficult to assemble to use, you won't use it and will resort to using the chair, which is dangerous. Now these are some um, more expensive options for getting up and down stairs. Um, sometimes um, stair lifts can be very expensive um, and perhaps many people could afford them, but they are a good um, option for folks who um, live in a place where there are stairs and cannot navigate them any longer. So stair lifts can be installed by licensed contractors and later on we'll give you links to get information for resources for all of the home modifications that we are showing you today. Well, let's look at handrails. <clears throat> now there are handrails that are just single bars that are attached into the wall and some handrails are more ornate um, that would go outside. Again, you want to remember to have handrails installed on both sides of the stairs not just one side, both sides. And if you have a very wide stairway, perhaps out, out of doors, you may want to have a third rail in the middle um, to help also with balance. <clears throat> Let's talk about lighting a little bit. Many times we need to get up in the evenings and use the restroom or the middle of the night perhaps to take medications. It's important to have our light, our, our way illuminated. Um, many people cannot sleep with light and that's okay because many night lights now come with motion detectors and you can purchase these at many home improvement stores or discount stores. So um, we recommend that you get a night light and place one on the path to your restroom, in the restroom and in your bedroom and any other areas um, like the kitchen where you may go for a drink of water make sure you have illumination to be able to see your way at night. You never know when something may have fallen in your path that you don't know about, especially if you share your home with someone else. There's other things that we can look at. Um, we want to have rugs in our homes in certain areas. Some rugs are not safe for us, but other rugs are necessary, like rugs in front of the kitchen sink, in front of the bathtub. But if these are slippery, then we want to make sure that we have double-sided tape, um, rug backing, or Velcro tape on both sides of the mat so that they don't slip or slide. Um, it's important though, if you're going to use double-sided tape or Velcro tape, to continually check them for wear and to make sure that they are still attached. 
um, perhaps it's better to go with a rug with backing that you would check on a less frequent basis. Well, one thing that we'd like to do with you today is we're going to ask you to think about your home and perhaps later go around your home. You can print out these questions um, from a, the link that you'll see in the link area just above the two links that look like a little chain. And we'll have this link available for you where you can download your own home assessment. But let's go through um, each room of your home and ask a few questions. So, <clears throat> on your floors, let's look at the floor in each room of your home. When you walk through a room, do you have to walk around furniture? Make sure that you have a clear path between your furniture. Um, your home shouldn't be an obstacle course. You want to be able to move around freely and safely. So, you may want to ask someone to help you move the furniture. Perhaps somebody from your local church or synagogue um, has a youth group that they need a project to do and they could come and help you. Or perhaps you have friends or family who would be willing. Also, you look on the floors of your home and do you have throw rugs? If you have throw rugs, you can either remove the rugs or use double-sided tape or non-slip backing so that the rugs won't slip. Slippery rugs are very dangerous. And keeping in mind, your home should not only be safe for you, the person who's used to using it, but any visitors that you might have also. They may not be used to that slippery rug that's in the kitchen. Another question for you to talk, think about about your floors. Are there newspapers, books, towels, shoes, magazines, boxes, blankets, or even the hem of an oversized bedspread draped on the floor or any of those items on the floor? If these things are on the floor or covers of couches, sofas, or chairs are draping onto the floor, they can become a tripping hazard. So you want to pick those things up and then always make sure that your bedspreads and couch and chair covers are the adequate size or have them hemmed so that they don't drag on the floor and cause a tripping hazard. Now thinking about your home again on the floors. Do you have to walk over or around wires or cords such as lamp, telephone, computer, or extension cords? Um, look closely in every room of your home. And remember, you can coil or tape cords and wires next to the wall so you can't trip over them. If necessary, have an electrician put in another more handy outlet for those types of appliances. Well, we've looked at the floor. Let's look at stairs and steps. Now, even if you live in a single level home, Chances are, somewhere outside or around or near your home, you have stairs. So pay close attention to this also. Are there papers, shoes, books, umbrella stands, or other objects on the stairs? If there are, pick up these things and keep them off the stairs. Um, any type of clutter on stairs can significantly increase your risk of falling. Are there some broken steps or uneven steps or... Um, some disrepaired wooden steps. If there are, fix those loose or uneven steps. Having a qualified contractor come in to help you would be um, a great um, opportunity for you to save yourself a fall. How about lighting? Um, are you missing a light over the stairway? If you are, have an electrician put in a light at the top and the bottom of the stairs with light switches at both areas. Lighting on stairs is very important. Um, we talked about this already, but do you have only one light switch for your stairs, only at the top or only at the bottom? Make sure you have two switches, one at the top and one at the bottom, so you can always turn on and off the light at either side. Now, has your stairway light bulb burned out? It's very difficult to change light bulbs in stairwells, so make sure you have a friend or family member or caretaker um, or maintenance person come in and take care of changing out those light bulbs. Now how about carpeting on your stairs? Is the carpet on the stairs loose or torn? If so, make sure the carpet is firmly attached to every step or remove the carpet and attach non-slip rubber treads to the stairs like we showed earlier. Just a few more questions for you. Are the handrails on your stairs loose or broken? Or is there a handrail only on one side of the stairs? 
If so, fix loose handrails or put in new ones. Make sure handrails are on both sides of the stairs and are as long as the stairs are. Make sure there are no shortcomings or you might be short a step also. Well, let's look at your kitchen. In the kitchen area, <clears throat> are there things that you use on high shelves? If you use things often, they should be at waist or eye level, not higher than eye level. So rearrange your kitchen, have a friend or family member come in and help you um, rearrange those areas about waist level. How about your step stool that you use in the kitchen? If you must use a step stool, please get one with a bar to hold on to and never use a chair as a step stool. Well, let's look in our bathrooms. Is the tub or shower floor slippery? If so, put in a non-slip rubber mat or self-stick strips on the floor or the, the tub or shower. And if you need some support getting in and out of the tub or up and down from the toilet, have a carpenter put in grab bars inside the tub and next to the toilet. Again, there are many options for grab bars. How about the bedrooms? Let's look at our bedrooms. Is the light near the bed hard to reach? Place a lamp close to your bed within easy reach. How about the path from your bed to your bathroom? Um, is, if it is dark, it um, can increase your risk of falling. So put a night light so you can see where you're walking. And again, some night lights go on by themselves after dark or some are even um, turned on by motion. Well, that's the end of our presentation and questions. We'll have many links for you to look at, many resources and areas where you can find um, help to purchase these types of home modifications and in many cases professionals to come in and assess your home. Um, there are lots of things that um, we will cover in those links so I encourage you to explore them thoroughly and thank you very much for listening to our presentation and just a few more things to cover before we go. These are the um, things that we can do to prevent falls. Now, I know it says four, but there's five, and there's actually many more. But one of the most important things that you can do is begin an exercise routine. Remember, lower body weakness and flexibility and balance issues can all be addressed by a regular physical activity program. Even a small two-minute walk every day can turn into three ten-minute walks. So if you're not able to exercise very much, start where you are and increase it in small increments until you're up to the recommended level of 30 minutes a day. Keeping in mind that 30 minutes can be broken into 10 minute segments. Also, have your medications reviewed. Take all of your herbs, supplements, and medications, either a list of them, a complete list, to your physician and your pharmacist. It's very important to have them both review your medications and your specialists. Make sure any time a medication is changed or you change a supplement or vitamin or any type of over-the-counter preparation that both your physician and pharmacist know about this. Also, have your vision checked every year. It's very important that we stay on top of our eye health as well. You can make your home safer. Um, there are many modifications we've shown today. Sometimes inviting a friend over to see if they see any fall hazards might be helpful. And then lastly, if you do have concerns about falling, don't let your concerns turn into an overwhelming fear. Talk with your physician about your concerns about falling and ask what steps you can take to stay on your feet. Thank you so much for joining us in our presentation today. Um, our website is www.oasisnet.org where there are many resources and links to perhaps an Oasis Center in your area of town. Again, go on all the links on this presentation to learn ways that you can make your home safer and decrease your risk of falling. Thank you so much for listening.